Uh, good day, everybody. Depending on where you are, it's afternoon here at Jubilee Day USA 2022. And I would like to introduce you to Victor Drover, who just happens to be the owner of the main sponsor of this event, which is Watchville. And uh, Victor, really, really thrilled to have you. We're also the uh, main um, sponsor last year for the Joomla Day USA. And without uh, your help, uh, this uh, would not be possible. And thank you for all the other sponsors as well. Please visit the website to see our other sponsors. And, um, and we just appreciate them. Victor is going to uh, do a, a talk on cloud Flare. So, Victor, I'm going to just hand it over to you, and uh, thank you for making yourself available. I'm going to talk to you today about Cloudflare and making your websites more performant. Um, if you'd like to make your website more performant and safer and make sure it's up to date, check out our free account at watchful.net to manage your websites. Uh, a little disclosures, uh, just to note that we have no financial relationship with Cloudflare. I'm giving this presentation simply as a fan and a longtime user. And my slides are available. Uh, the link is here at the bottom. I'll present it again a little later, but don't worry about taking notes or jotting down code snippets. Um, everything you need will be in those slides. So uh, to get started then, who am I? Um, I'm a longtime community member. Like many of us today uh, at the event, been using Joomla for a very long time. Um, numerous businesses, uh, softwares that we've managed over the years, been to many events, uh, served on many committees, and just really glad to be here and take part in, in this event again this year, uh, and really, really proud to sponsor, um, sponsor JA also. Okay, so what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about making your website uh, faster uh, with Cloudflare. There's a lot of things that Cloudflare does. Um, in addition to performance enhancement, I'm going to specifically talk about um, how it makes your website faster and, um, and leave the security and other um, features to the side. So to do that, we're gonna dig into a, a few things that not everyone is uh, necessarily um, uh, doing in their day-to-day -day work. And that has to do with modifying your uh, domain name server records and, um, and using DNS proxies. DNS stands for uh, domain name system usually or commonly people will say domain name server. So I'm gonna talk about what a DNS proxy is. Cloudflare of course is a DNS, DNS proxy. Why you might wanna use that, uh, how to make Cloudflare your DNS proxy. And then we're gonna talk about once that's done as a kind of a little tutorial, how, your, how that improves your site and how you can make it even better with Cloudflare. So let's jump into uh, DNS and what that is. Um, uh, domain name server um, is, you know, not surprisingly, a computer that um, serves up uh, or relates domain names to IP addresses. So on the left here, you can see um, a browser makes a request in maybe example.com. Joe, can you see my mouse moving at all? Doesn't matter if you can, don't worry about it. Yeah, we um, do, we do. Great. Yeah, we do. Sorry about that. I was muted. No problem, no problem. And um, when it receives, when these, when you make a request from your browser, it goes to this worldwide network of servers. Um, and then all of these maintain a database of URLs and IP addresses. And it takes this URL, returns an IP address. This is going to be the IP address of the computer that is hosting this website. Sends that back to the browser. The browser can turn around and say, okay, now I've got the IP address. This is a unique address on the planet and I will send back any files related to that domain that are at this IP address. So DNS servers are this network of computers that convert URLs to domain names. Oh. Uh, and you can test this for yourself on essentially um, any computer. You can uh, enter a trace route in whatever um, shell program you have or terminal application. And here I'm doing a trace route for Joomla.org. And you can see that it uh, starts uh, hopping around the internet, trying to reach that domain. So it starts at my local IP address, it goes to my service provider for my internet, and then it goes to various hosting accounts and redirects and ends up at this final IP address here ending in .86. That is the Joomla.org web server. That's not a security release, this is public information. Uh, anyone can find out almost any kind of, uh, a lot of information, but specifically, 
the IP address of any domain or where that resolves to by doing a simple trace route um, or searching network tools in Google and entering a domain name, very easy. So again, if you uh, go into a browser, if you use a browser and you use a hypertext protocol, of course, HTTPS, we use that every day, all of us, I'm sure, and you ask for a domain, it will do this trace route in the background, return this URL, and then the computer will return any HTML, that's what this hypertext prefix means, it will return any HTML documents related to the domain that was included in the request. So because of this, domain name servers are the backbone of the internet. They relate domains with unique IP addresses. And it's very important to know that IP addresses are, are unique um, on the internet. That's the only way the system works. So in a, in a simpler way, I've just got it mapped out here. And I've done this because I'll, I'll come back to this description a few times. Um, you essentially have a DNS server which returns an IP address following some requests, say, in a browser. And we'll talk about browser requests all day. So if I fail to say that, just mean a request means a browser request or someone entering a URL in the address bar in your browser. Uh, note that I've put registrar here, a registrar, a domain registrar. It's where you purchase your domain, something like GoDaddy or Enom or Bluehost. Oftentimes, the registrar is the DNS server or they're one and the same, or they appear to be the same. So I've written those together, um, but you may use them interchangeably. So that's, a, that's what a domain name system is and domain name servers are. Uh, then we also have something called proxy servers. Now, if we just break that up a little bit, server is kind of obvious. It's, it's gonna be a computer serving up a website in our case. Proxy means just by definition on its own uh, to represent, to be a representative for someone or some something um, to stand in for that. In, if you have a, a proxy vote at a, at a board meeting, that means someone can attend and they've said to someone who is attending, you may make the vote for me, you're my proxy. On the internet, we have proxy servers and they stand between the request you make and the um, site that you're connecting to. And so it's uh, a gateway between those, between the request and the content that's delivered. And it's important to know that um, uh, why people use proxy servers. So I'll just give you an example of uh, what happens when uh, DNS goes wrong. Uh, and you can see here, this is a really, this is a really big uh, DNS based outage from October this is at the top here from Ars Technica or Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, et cetera. They all went down due to a um, really big problem with their DNS. It looks like Facebook had deleted some uh, records at their um, domain name server and caused this massive outage. More recently, Enom had a bug in their DNS system that took down 350,000 domains. So this illustrates how important um, DNS is to how our websites operate. And I, I will imagine most of the people listening to this talk back up their websites on a regular basis because backups are important. Well, having a backup DNS server is just as important, perhaps more important, if you will. So on the left here is the standard situation where you have a registrar or a DNS server serving IP addresses. Cloudflare sits in the middle. It's the proxy. You still have what we call our primary DNS server. Cloudflare is technically a second, secondary DNS server or a backup DNS. So when you request something of an IP address, it, it will be the first to respond with the IP address of the server you're trying to connect to, i.e. the website you're trying to view. So keep that in mind, Cloudflare plays this, uh, in the central system of domain name servers worldwide, Cloudflare, by being a DNS proxy, really has a, a really can dig deeply into what's happening with your site and the con that it's, content that is served from that site and where that content is delivered to your customers or the route it takes from your server to your website viewers. And by modifying uh, those, those routes and doing things more efficiently, you can get significant performance changes. So I'm gonna quickly go through a, a tutorial on how you can use Cloudflare as your DNS proxy. There are other DNS proxy servers. Uh, Cloudflare is uh, probably the industry leader in this area. They innovate and push other players in the industry because of their size. Um, they, I mean, they only started in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. So they've really, um, they're really ra rapidly uh, expanding and developing and innovating. Importantly, Cloudflare has a very extremely generous, almost impossibly generous free 
tier. And what I'm going to show you today is how to use the free tier only. Nothing in this talk will require a credit card, a payment uh, of any sort. The only thing you have to do is make Cloudflare your DNS proxy, which you can revoke that at any time. So it's very risk-free. And just to, just to note, because the DNS proxy is so central or DNS is so central to what you're doing, um, it's important that they're a reputable company and you can do your own research, but you will find that Cloudflare is extremely reputable and considered uh, safe by many. And I'll have a justification for that to show you in a little bit. Uh, here's a little hint <laughs> where that um, uh, indirect um, referral is gonna come from. Uh, when you sign up for an account at Cloudflare, the first thing you'll wanna do is add your first website. Um, we do this every time we launch a new site. So we go through this process uh, every time. Many hosts that are integrated with Cloudflare will do this in the background. You can ask your host if they're using Cloudflare. You may be getting some of the benefits already because of the hosting account you're using. Other hosts are using some Cloudflare features, but not all. They may provide you a separate login where you can manually uh, tweak and change your Cloudflare. So depending on your setup, you might wanna talk with your host to ask if this has been done for you already. Uh, so you wouldn't do it twice, for example. There'd be no benefit to do Dev2 Cloudflare accounts. Okay, so um, before I get too distracted, I'm talking to your host. Uh, the first thing you want to do is put in your domain name, and I've just put in Joomla.org as a test. I have no access to this domain, but I can put it in here and, and see what happens. Um, and I've done that, and, and when you hit Add Site, you get presented with this screen. It's, uh, it's a smart uh, marketing display. All the paid plans are at the top. You can ignore all that, jump right to the bottom, select the $0 free tier, and you can see some a uh, few basic features here, but we're not gonna talk about those today. We're gonna talk about the, the performance tools in Cloudflare. So you click, this is a zero tier at the bottom, and that brings you to what is the most important and difficult part. It's not very difficult, but it's not, um, uh, it's not as easy as clicking a button. You actually have to do a couple of things here. Um, in this case, I've said, please add Joomla.org to Cloudflare. Cloudflare, they haven't actually added the site to Cloudflare yet, they're waiting. They need me to go and change my existing domain records. Where, where are they um, kept? In this case, I didn't know this, but it appears that GoDaddy is the registrar for Joomla.org. Um, again, this is public information. If you do something like this, uh, it comes up freely. Um, so it looks like I would have to go into my GoDaddy account to modify my existing DNA, DNS settings. Uh, I will say this a little later, uh, and just if I forget, I'll say it now. Um, off the, the technical name for that is editing your DNS zone file, or simply editing your zone file. So you hear that later. What I'm talking about is changing the records for your DNS server, for example, and other um, DNS level attributes on your account on your domain. So they've scanned this. They know GoDaddy's the registrar, and they've looked at the existing name servers, the domain name servers. And you can see actually they're already Cloudflare. So here is kind of a, a non or an indirect endorsement of Cloudflare because Joomla is using clearly already Cloudflare to um, uh, make their sites faster and to make them safer. So normally these might be numbers or they might have generic names like um, netserver.com. A lot of hosts will use something very generic that's a sign that they're using a third party tool, by the way. Uh, but that's, that's okay. That's the way the internet works. So if, I, if, if this wasn't Cloudflare already, um, I, I would go to my GoDaddy account and remove the existing records and replace them with what they're suggesting here at the bottom, april.ns, ns stands for name server, .cloudflare.com and guy.ns.cloudflare.com. These have been the standard Cloudflare name servers for a long time, at least 10 years. My guess is that Joomla's been using Cloudflare for maybe a little longer, or they have an enterprise account. Maybe these are enterprise name servers. Okay, so um, how would I do this? I would click this link and it would uh, eventually get me to the name server editor at GoDaddy. And this would be a little different for every domain name registrar, Bluehost, Enom, Hover. They're literally hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, uh, registrars, domain registrars. Uh, and you would change your existing um, name servers. In this case, I think this is a little cheeky. This screenshot was from the GoDaddy documentation page and they're showing InMotion hosting as the outgoing or existing name server that you should change 
uh, presumably to GoDaddy. So maybe that's a little in motion GoDaddy uh, competition there. In any event, you would remove these, add in, let's go back one slide, add in the April and the Guy name service for Cloudflare and click save. And you've kind of done most of the work here, except you have a really big hurry up and wait. Um, it's the expression we use here. You have to hurry up and wait because changing a name server record can take up to 24 to 48 hours. Um, and the reason that is, is because remember I told you this um, domain name server is not one computer. This is a network of thousands of computers and routers all over the world that all need to update their database for whatever URL you're talking about to have now a new uh, name server. They're actually saying, what's the name server for this domain? And then it will return the IP address. So it has to update all of these servers all around the world. Now, in my experience, usually within an hour or so, I'm getting my, my work PC to show the new changes to the DNS records. But uh, for worldwide coverage, they always recommend waiting 24 to 48 hours. Um, and that's going to keep the, keep that 24 to 48 hours in mind for a moment, because I'm going to circle back to it. That's one of the uh, disadvantages of most registrars and one of the, and, and then con in contrast, one of the advantages of a DNS proxy. And I'll illustrate that in just a moment. So you've waited your 48 hours. You immediately have a few, what I call basic Cloudflare advantages. You haven't necessarily done anything special to speed up your site, but already I think you're in a better place. Why? Well, you've got a separation of ownership and administration for your domain. And what do I mean by that? Okay, your registrar where you registered your domain, let's just say that's GoDaddy. And again, no financial uh, relationship with GoDaddy at all. I'd like to disclose that. Um, that's where your domain is managed, where you registered it. If you needed to change the contact information or needed to transfer it to a new owner, you would do that at GoDaddy. Now, if you're working in a team, Maybe you're um, hiring freelancers, maybe you're hiring overseas staff, um, or maybe you know, you're know you just hiring someone who's not next to you in the office. Um, if you have to make a DNS change at your registrar, it's possible for you to give up or allow access to some of the ownership transfer tools. And there are a number of cases widely publicized where domains get stolen by bad actors who were given access to uh, a registrar's um, uh, domain uh, editing area when all they needed to do was, for instance, add a new mail server or add a subdomain, for example. So it's really nice to have the ownership privileges separate from the administration privileges. And uh, I'm sure many of you know this, the uh, management of domains, the technology behind that is really old and there's very little um, motivation for domain registrars to update their technology and provide things like access control so you can have different levels of access. Many of them are quite poor in many areas. So by moving the uh, uh, editing or managing of the domain name server records or the zone file records to Cloudflare, you can give your staff or your outsourced um, uh, team members access to Cloudflare, but not give them any access to transfer or, or change the ownership or the contact information on the domain. So it's a really nice way to um, um, uh, horseshoe in some um, access control. So I'd like that, great. The other item is that you have a separation of registrar and DNS. If your registrar goes down, you can't change your DNS files. Maybe, sorry, one, one ahead too many. You might not think that's very important, but if you have, a, if there's an outage at your registrar, you can't change your DNS records, you're stuck until the registrar comes back online for you to come and fix and redirect your website because the DNS tells, remember, relates a domain to the IP address. It, it prevents you from um, taking quick action. Here's another example. You're under a DDoS attack, okay? A denial, a dedicated denial of service attack. One of the ways to mitigate that is to temporarily redirect your domain to a dead end so that the traffic doesn't go anywhere. The attackers get uh, discouraged and then you can kind of do a repair. Uh, if you can't get, if you have to wait 48 hours for changes at your DNS to take place, um, that's also a problem, which need, leads me into directly the uh, really important thing, the near instant propagation of DNS changes. When you make a, a change to your zone file at Cloudflare, 
less than five minutes, in my experience, instantaneous change occurs planet wide. So you can, it's really great for troubleshooting. Um, and that sounds a little abstract. So I came up with a practical example of why having quick instant propagation of zone file changes is important. And it has to do with um, uh, testing your email server. And here is all the uh, locations, current locations of all the edge servers in Cloudflare. So when you make a change and you want it to happen quickly, it near instantaneously changes the uh, DNS records across the planet at all these locations at once. It's, it's amazing. And here's a practical example. If you go to mailtester.com, the link is at the top. You can, for instance, you'll get a temporary email address. You send an email to it from your mail server, from your website, maybe a contact form. And it will tell you if that email is spammy or not spammy. And it's really important for a new customer. You've just launched your website. You want the contact form emails, for example, to arrive, not be in the spam box, not be in the promotions folder, for example, if you're using Gmail. So one way to do that is to use this mail tester, it's totally free, to uh, send test messages and have mail tester uh, do an analysis. So I've, I've completed that and you can see I've got an 8.6 out of 10, that's really great. Anything over seven is highly deliverable. And then it rates your um, email on various qualities. And you can click through these and there'll be lots of detail on how to improve your email standing. You may not think this is related to DNS, but bear with me, we'll get there. Uh, here I'm clicking through on one of those areas where I had a, um, a demerit. You can see here, there's a minus 0.7 out of 10 because my, HT, uh, my HTML and text parts of my email were different. So I don't wanna get into why that is. I created this test to make sure I had a, a demerit so I could give you this uh, example. Um, but basically I can use, I can make changes on my DNS records to fix these problems. Here's another one here that's very common. SPF, hello, does not publish an SPF record. SPF records are part of um, the email uh, specification that helps, um, helps computers determine if the email has been sent by a known party, someone who has a good reputation. And again, you can put SPF records at your DNS level and find out if your emails are working and improve the deliverability of your emails. So how does this relate to DNS in a practical way? If I use a service and now maybe I have a two out of 10, mail tester tells me what I need to add to my DNS records to improve my deliverability, I can simply go right into Cloudflare. This is um, an, uh, an editing um, screen for the uh, zone file editor at Cloudflare. And you can see I can add spf.google here as an entry for my domain as a text record. So I'm adding a text record to my zone file. When I click save, this will instantly go out to all my all the servers in Cloudflare's network, all, all the edge servers. Now I can go back to mail tester, send another test message and see if this change affected the ability, affected the spamminess of that email. If I had to wait an hour or 48 hours for each one of these tests, it would be a very long and tedious test. And by the way, if, it's, if your emails are spammy, your client is not receiving emails very well all this time you're testing. So being able to instantly change the DNS records and then retest, in this case, the uh, mail server or the spamminess of your emails is really helpful. So it's a really practical, practical example. I use it all the time. So I thought I'd put it out there for you to use on your sites if you decide to use this. So those are the basic Cloudflare advantages. We haven't even gotten to the performance uh, side of it yet. And we're gonna uh, break down the performance improvements into easy wins and what I call the new hotness. So the things that have been released in the last, say, uh, 12 to 18 months. So one quick uh, question before we go on, Victor, if you don't mind. So, uh, and, and I know that this was an issue for me. So the question is, um, I tried Cloud, Flare in the past, but stopped using it because I experienced issues with cache that I found maddening. And the only solution that I knew was to turn Cloudflare off while, while I worked on the site. Is this always the case? If not, what are the steps that should be taken to uh, see the changes immediately? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'm going to talk about caching in a minute. Uh, and if you would remind me at the end, I'll actually pull up a Cloudflare and show you exactly how to solve the problem that you're describing. They have two really fantastic tools for it. Um, should not be a problem any longer. Perfect. 
probably wasn't a problem then. You just didn't know where to click. Basically, they have a development mode. And when you're in development mode, it completely disables the cache. So that's what you use when you're putting a site or when you're still working on a site and it has maybe say about to go live or you're making some changes. And then when you're done, you clear the cache, disable development mode, and then things start to work again. So I can show you that if you remind me at the end, but it's certainly, uh, I, that's my workflow every time I'm doing uh, heavy modifications, especially the things like CSS or JavaScript. Does that answer your question, Joe? I think that is, but it'd be great for you at the end to just show an example of how that's done. Love to, and it's very easy to. I just don't have a slide for you, but I'll definitely show you at the end. Okay, so um, we are going to talk about the uh, four performance easy four easy wins for performance, and here are the four areas uh, that have to do with minification, compression, content delivery networks, and asynchronous JavaScript loading. Now, I'm going to tell you all about these four topics. So you're gonna learn about them. Um, if you know about them, great, bear with, bear with me, but I wanna give you some details so you understand what's happening so you can make a good decision. Uh, there's no, everything works for every website. You do have to do some experimentation to get the most out of Cloudflare and to make sure your site continues to work normally. So in terms of minification, I just wanna provide a quick example. At the top here, we call it the normal, if you will, uh, CSS, you see, um, your classes and your uh, attributes associated with those classes. Oftentimes we have lots of uh, line breaks and spaces, like for instance, a space after the colon, a space after uh, a comma, if there are multiple um, uh, classes, for example. When you minify, you remove all the white space, all the line breaks, all the non-essential spaces, and you end up with a much smaller file. It's harder to read, but it's, it's faster for computers to process, faster to deliver to your uh, website viewers. So it's really great to minify uh, as many assets as you can. In Cloudflare, it's, uh, many of these will be one click um, to enable or disable these features. So uh, if you're in Cloudflare, you go to the speed optimization area and you can then choose to minify or not JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. And in our experience, almost always you can leave these bottom two checked JavaScript on some sites requires a bit of a more careful hand, especially on e-commerce e sites, that can be a little tricky. So you may want to, for instance, enable these to make sure your site's working properly, make sure it's loading faster because it should start to load faster as soon as you enable minification. Um, and then you can experiment with the JavaScript after. This would be the same advice, by the way, if you were using a minification tool, like a component on your Joomla website. The difference being, uh, you don't have to have a component, so your website should run faster. Uh, and you're offloading that CPU work to Cloudflare. So again, it should make your system um, work better. So the next area we we're talking about is compression. Gzip compression is well known to many Joomla users because it's in the uh, global configuration. And you can see I've got the server tab loaded here. And if your server has the Gzip module installed, which almost every web server does, then you can simply tick this box and your pages will be compressed before they're delivered to the person using your site. What does that mean? Compressed files are smaller, so it's less bandwidth, and they get to the user faster because they don't have to ask for every single file. They can compress everything into, say, one or a few files and just deliver those. So things are smaller, less bandwidth, and fewer individual file requests means faster delivery. Compression is an important part of the internet. Everyone almost should be using compression for most web applications. Um, that are public. But gzip is not considered the best compression algorithm. There's something called Brotley compression. And um, again, it's a one-click enable, uh, which you can turn on and off and see how your site is loading. And you can measure that with a number of common tools. GT Metrics is a common one. Google Lighthouse is another one. Uh, I'm going to show you some internal tools that Cloudflare has for measuring at the end. You can see those. But essentially, you, if you don't want to use gzip compression on your server, or you want to have more compression, then you can consider using Brotly on your Cloudflare account. Importantly, every time you compress a file, it requires CPU resources. So if you're not doing that on your server, and you're offloading that to Cloudflare, you can gain some CPU, uh, some resource benefits by not using as many CPU cycles to make uh, those, to compress those files. So if you compare uh, Brotly compression to gzip, um, on the top 1,000 URLs on the internet, um, it's Brotly compressed files are 14% smaller for JavaScript, 
21% for HTML and 17% for CSS. And there's a link here where you can read all about um, those, those tests. So Broly it should be a superior compression technology. It does use, apparently, um, it does compress faster. Uh, that won't really be in a uh, help you in this case because that's being done by Cloudflare. If you were doing Broly compression on your own server, you might choose that over Gzip because it's faster. In this case, it's you're offloading it all to Cloudflare anyway, so you're not getting an extra benefit out of that um, speed increase. The next kind of easy win you get with Cloudflare is um, the uh, content delivery network. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a series of edge servers around the world. And this is a simplified diagram where you've got an origin server. That means where the content is originally hosted. So this would be your website on your web server, for example. And then a bunch of edge locations around the world. And why is this important? Uh, if I'm in um, Australia and I want to watch a movie from this website and it's hosted on that server, it takes time, the farther away I am geographically. So from Australia to Europe is, is X, okay? If I instead pull that information from this edge server, this one in India or this one here in Central Asia, um, it's a lot, it's about half the distance. So it's one half X, the time for this data to get to my location. So this is faster for my Australian users. Okay, now if I'm in Europe, maybe I'll go right to the origin server. If I'm in Newfoundland, Canada, my birthplace, by the way, then I'll probably use this edge server uh, down here in the Southeastern US. So content delivery networks can really speed up content for your uh, users, depending on where they're located. Importantly, this traffic from the edge server to the user does not require bandwidth from the origin server, from your website. More and more people are using um, uh, usage-based tools like um, Amazon CloudFront, where the amount of bandwidth you use, you get charged for, just like when you get charged for space at Amazon S3 or Backblaze B2. So especially if you're doing that, there could be a really great cost savings um, for using a uh, content delivery network with edge servers if you're paying for bandwidth. If you're not, it's just a faster experience for most people around the world because they'll be connecting to an edge server. Um, unlike the other tools, you don't have to enable CDN. It's static for things like images, uh, static CSS files, that sort of thing. Um, this is a screenshot of the zone file from a domain on Cloudflare. Uh, earlier, I showed you the edit screen. This is just the list of them. You can see this is an A record and a bunch of C name records. If you don't know what those are, don't worry. Um, the most important record is the A record. This relates the domain name to the server. And when there's an orange cloud, that means the, not surprisingly, the domain is proxied and the traffic, the uh, static resources are automatically using the CDN. So you get a no config content delivery network 100% for free. You can go out and pay for a CDN, but for cloud using Cloudflare, you don't need to. It's completely free. Okay, so the last easy win I want to talk about has to do with uh, JavaScript. JavaScript can slow down sites for a number of reasons, um, but here's one really important one. There's something in um, uh, about web pages called the first contentful paint. This means the, how much time it takes for the first um, display to appear on whatever screen. Here we're using a mobile screen because JavaScript, uh, because mobile phones in the past have not had as much uh, bandwidth. And so you've wanted to really speed up on the mobile, but this applies to desktops and tablets also, or any, any screen really. Um, normally what happens is before a phone or a device will display anything, it needs to, make sure all the JavaScript is downloaded. So here the request is being made and once all the JavaScript has been processed, then it will start to load the page. So there's a long delay here between the making of the request and the first bit of text that appears on the page. So if you can improve that delay, you can speed up uh, the experience, the, the browsing experience for your site viewers. So when you use Cloudflare, they actually, uh, the, the actual tool is called Rocket Loader. They defer JavaScript until the very end, which is a common, and you can do that with a plugin or a component in Joomla. But it's a really interesting tool. What they do is they, they, they remove all the JavaScript. They don't just put it at the end, they remove it all. 
And then they start to show very quickly the content, the non-JavaScript-based content on the site. Sorry about that. Then in real time, they dynamically re-inject it back in. So for instance, in this case, we're talking about a JavaScript-based advert, but it could be a, a YouTube video, for example. And so now I get to see this first paint, first contentful paint much earlier than I would if I wasn't using Rocket Loader. I wasn't using Cloudflare to asynchronously and dynamically re-inject that JavaScript back into uh, the page. Okay, so like the other three, um, this is a simple on off. JavaScript can always, you know, there's always a risk. So I always tell people to, to do a test before and after, change one thing, test your site, make sure it works. Um, but we use this on all our sites for sure. Uh, although we don't always compress, we don't always minify our JavaScript, but we almost always use Rocket Loader. So it's, it's quite good. So far with the easy wins, we've done a bunch of things to improve performance of our website. On the server side, we've auto minified a bunch of resources, CSS, HTML for sure, maybe some JavaScript. Once that's been minified, we've used uh, an improved compression algorithm. So instead of gzip, broadly, and then for the JavaScript, we're loading it asynchronously and dynamically with a uh, rocket loader. So all of those things that would normally or could normally be done on the server side, right, on your hosting account every time your page loads, gets offloaded to Cloudflare. Less CPU, less bandwidth, less resources should mean your, your website should be working better. And then of course, so that's on the server side. Um, externally, you can replace a content delivery network with the free one at, at Cloudflare and why wouldn't you? And save traffic bandwidth, et cetera. Really incredible. Okay. Those are the things that we have been doing for years, but in the last uh, year and a half or so, Cloudflare has just been kind of leapfrogging themselves. They're coming up with so many things. I can't even get into a bunch of them. There's so much they've done. Buying other companies, buying startups, they're really, really working hard to make the web uh, better and faster and safer. So based uh, building on top of those things, we can actually speed things up even more. And I see I'm about 15 minutes. I should get there at the end. Um, I'll try and... I don't want to speed up too much because it gets a little technical here, but I'm going to talk about uh, the new items that they've come up with. And it's two things in particular. One is uh, improving the execution of third-party scripts, not when they load necessarily, but just um, executing them uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on their edge servers. And I'll tell you what that is. And the other thing is called early hints. And that has to do with asset preloading. So preloading things that a web page will need before it would normally. And I'm going to dive into each of these in uh, some detail. So here are the top 10 uh, third-party uh, scripts that you find on the internet. Um, this is, might be a year or two old, but you know the, the main, main players are here, Google Fonts, Facebook, Google Analytics, uh, Shopify is down here. You can see it's actually a CDN. These are all third-party scripts that you may have in YouTube. Here you go. These are all third-party scripts that have to run on your site, uh, usually on every page load uh, or every cache refresh, for example. They slow your site down. Um, they require external requests to uh, other companies, which you don't have any control over. Um, it, it really has, it's really it can be one of the bottlenecks on your site. They're typically not cached. They typically don't use content delivery networks, which means they have the longest possible transit times between you, between your origin server and the person viewing your site. And as I said, uh, dependencies with these external requests. So if we can improve those, we can again offload that um, those resources or offload the demand on the on your server to Cloudflare. Your site should speed up. So we go back to our edge server um, model. If this is a little bit different than having your origin server here in the in the previous diagram, your origin server was in the middle serving these edge locations. In the case of Zaraz, that's what they call this tool. Um, Cloudflare actually becomes your origin server. So you take the third-party scripts out of your site and many Joomla users may be used to editing their index.php file to say at Google Analytics or doing that in their template or theme um, and adding it in there for them to do it for you. But those are all loading locally on your web server. If you use Zarez, you can offload them to Cloudflare and have them execute on the edge, load on the edge. They don't even show up in your source code, even though they work just fine. And I'm gonna show you how to use Zaraz here um, quickly. It's a two-step process. You go into Zaraz, you create a trigger, for example, a page load, 
and you say, when that trigger happens, load this script and you give, you tell Cloudflare which script to run. So um, Zara's triggers create, again, I'll have a link to the slides at the end. You can download all of these things. You put in a few rule, you have to create a trigger. There's a, a one standard trigger called page load. That's a system trigger. You don't need to create that. Uh, but we create this one where you call it your host name. So we create a, a trigger that says when our host name is, it starts with watchful, okay? That's our trigger. We're gonna do something when that happens. Uh, this slide is only there for you to copy paste later. There's no additional information here. I just uh, thought folks might wanna be copying the exact strings here. So I'll just skip past this one. Once your trigger is created, now you can say what to do here in this case, a Google Analytics script. Zara's tools, add new custom HTML. You get this screen, there's nothing to do. You just click save. And then you say, let's create an action. When there's a page view and when the domain is watchful.net, remember we created this trigger in the first step, then inject this HTML. And here's where you would place, for instance, your Google Analytics tracking snippet. What's really great about this is you can also control when the snippet runs. You can exclude, in this case, the administrator folder. So if I'm doing admin, there's no need to track Google Analytics for that. That's going to dilute out the um, other uh, page loads that you do want information on, for example, if we're talking about Google Analytics. But it's a really uh, great way to do that. Maybe you have multiple Google Analytics properties on different folders. You can really control where and when the script runs using uh, these triggers and the blocking triggers. So Zarez is really great for that. And the last one is called early hints. This is maybe the most technical part of the talk, so bear with me. Um, we'll go back to our diagram of a DNS server uh, getting a request of a domain, returning the IP address. But what happens after the IP address happens? Let's just think about that for a second. Once I've got the IP address, the computer, the web server, has to decide what assets are required, what images, what CSS, what JavaScript. It has to figure out all the things that are required for the page to load. When, that, when that's done, it sends a status code 200. You've probably all seen this as a, a status um, when analyzing your websites. And then once, it, once your browser gets us 200, 200 says, hey, everything's okay. All the assets start to get downloaded. We call this step here, deciding what assets are required. We call that server think time, okay? If you can reduce server think time, or somehow get around it, you could speed up this whole process, speed up when and how fast the assets get delivered, meaning how fast the web page can load for a visitor on your website. So when you have Cloudflare, here's what happens. Cloudflare does this really cool thing. Server think time still continues. This has to happen. The 200 code still has to happen before the assets will be properly delivered. So this is still going forward. This is an unchanged process. But what happens is Cloudflare sends a 103 status. There's a specification for this. I'll give you a link in a moment. Like a 200, this 103 says, hey, we think these assets are likely to be required once this 200 comes in. And because it's likely, why, don't, why doesn't the browser, for example, start preloading these assets? Hey, download this CSS file. Take this compressed um, uh, HTML output, for example. Okay, so it can start doing some of those things on the side so that when this 200 comes in, I don't have to begin asset delivery. Let me go back to slide. So this ends with when the 200 comes in, asset delivery begins. In this case, when the 200 comes in, it, all it has to do is complete the asset delivery because a bunch of these assets are already preloaded. Okay, so this can speed up your site literally by up to 30%, this section of the um, loading that. And so you can uh, click this link at the bottom if you're interested to learn about status 103. Uh, but enabling early hints is super easy in Cloudflare. It's in the same area as the other performance tools. And you turn it on and there's really very little testing, but please do. Um, this should speed up your site dramatically. Okay, so the free flout Cloudflare tools we've discussed today, auto minification, Broltly compression, content delivery networks, asynchronous and dynamic um, JavaScript injection, running those scripts on the edge with Zara's and asset preloading with early hints. All of those things are going to dramatically increase the speed of your site. And you can do this all along the way with the tools I mentioned before, GT Metrics, Google Lighthouse. Um, there's also, uh, Cloudflare keeps track of this also, and they will make uh, basically screenshots of your site as it loads over time. 
So here you can see without Cloudflare, there's nothing loaded, there's nothing loaded, there's nothing loaded. And until I get to 2.7 seconds, we will call this the first contentful paint, okay? So if I'm looking at my phone for three seconds, in modern terms, that's very slow, very, uh, <laughs> someone's gone somewhere else because I probably think my site is broken. With Cloudflare, you can see the first contentful paint is at least coming up 50% faster, okay? So we really haven't done anything special. We haven't done anything to really optimize a site. We're getting a 50% increase. There's another site that belongs to a, a colleague of mine. And again, we're getting two and a quarter seconds for the first paint uh, without Cloudflare and maybe sub one second for uh, with Cloudflare. And once you see your site, site loading, usually people then uh, start going, right? That's an important metric, that first contentful paint. Okay, well, I think that's all I wanted to tell you about on the performance side. I, I really need to prepare a full second talk about the security tools. And this is just a brief history of the uh, major things that Cloudflare has done over the years. Scrape Shield, Universal SSL, unmetered mitigation of uh, distributed denial of service attacks. Unmetered here, meaning it doesn't matter how much traffic comes, you're protected from DDoS attacks, unbelievable. Bot fight mode, which protects against um, spam bots and other uh, bad actors coming to your site. Universal web application firewall, and then reputation-based threat protection. Um, if you guys have used Project Honeypot, you can integrate that into your site for free to block anyone who's a bad actor at, uh, as, as determined by Honey Project Honeypot. Unbelievable that all this is free. So I could talk about the security side, but I just wanted to put that out there, all included with the free plan we set up early on. Okay, uh, that's all I've got today. Um, please feel free to reach out. My email's at the top, my Twitter's on the side here, and the link to the slides, please uh, download them at your uh, convenience if you wanna get any information. And if there are more questions, I'd be happy to take them. And Joe, I still have on my mind, if you're ready, I can give you that demo for clearing the cache when you're developing with Watchful. Thank oh, you. that was wonderful. Victor, we do have questions and, and this was fantastic tips. So uh, for people that use tools already like JCH Optimize or JSpeed, do we want to just uh, replace that with Cloud? Blair, uh, or could you still use those tools? Would there be any benefit or would there be conflicts? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think you need to, I was trying to get up to my full view there, but we can just leave it here. Um, and that's a great question. If you're using uh, any other software, it could be a, a, a component like JCH Optimize, or it could be another third-party service or another uh, proxy. I think you want to tread carefully. Uh, you need to balance, can I, I mean, I mean I'm definitely not going to say remove this and replace it with Cloudflare. I can't say that. Uh, what I will say is uh, you can compare, am I getting the same amount of benefits from this as I am from that? So it's very easy to, um, like, for instance, JCAH Optimize, if you look at their documentation, they will tell you, test this. Like, they can do CSS compression. They can do certain things. Um, they can do some preloaded headers in your HD access file. There are a number of common ways that these performance uh, tools work. And so what I would say is, if you're using something like uh, JCH Optimize, measure how well it works with it enabled and disabled. Great. Go to Cloudflare. Implement some of their performance tools with your JCH Optimize off and say, is it any better? Is it any worse? You can do some of the things in combination, and there might be some Joomla specific things that you might want uh, a specific tool to do. Uh, but you know what I always do is test, test, test. I go, when I'm building sites from scratch um, or building a new installation package, which is gonna have a default set of tools, every tool gets added, we go and do a bunch of performance testing. Did this hot new plugin really slow my site down? I need to know before I make it a part of a tool I'll use day to day. So like I said earlier with Cloudflare, you should test and compare the results. You should do the same thing if you're making a, an infrastructure change on your site with any component, really, not just a, not just a performance one. Awesome. Now, uh, another question from Karen as well is if um, she knows that her web servers are located in uh, the United States and their clients are U.S. clients, is there any benefits uh, using Cloudflare uh, from a CDM perspective? 100%. I mean, you can't really turn it off anyway, but it's going to work out what the shortest route is. And I just wanted to pull up that map of all the servers they have, because you'll see they're just way more than 
Like look at all the ones in the US. Right, right, like, right. You're going to get the benefits, simple as that. So almost anywhere in the world, maybe with the exception of Ice, uh, Greenland, I guess, <laughs> or yeah, Iceland, whatever it is. So um, yeah, I, I think you would get the benefit uh, for sure. And even if you don't, like at a speed, maybe you're not getting a big speed bump because the geographic distances are small. You're getting a bandwidth improvement. You're not serving them from your own server. Cloudflare will serve them to most of your customers. Your, your system will use less bandwidth and that's just better for your server. Uh, this is an interesting question from Hugh. He says he uses a uh, page builder from Utheme. That would be Utheme Pro. And he found an issue with the site loading into the page builder when he activated Rocket Loader. I'm not sure I understand what that is. Does that make sense to you? It sure does. Like, especially with JavaScript, you have to test and make sure it's working properly. My guess is there's something there that's being restricted on the Cloudflare side causing some kind of loop or confusion. Um, that's something that you might be able to sort out using some of the more advanced rule-based tools that, that Cloudflare has and I did not discuss today. Um, but if it doesn't work for you, for instance, then um, you, know, you should probably not use that feature, right? Like don't minify JavaScript if it prevents uh, your checkout in your e-commerce store. That's a, kind of a, a, one of those things you should test as you go. Um, it could also be that if you only used, um, if you could, could you restrict, could you block out rocket loader from your admin, for instance, if you're doing editing a page? I don't think you can. So again, when you're doing dealing with JavaScript, our experience is uh, enable and test. And if it's not working for you, it's okay to put that one thing to the side and use the rest of the tools, for example, or whatever subset is best for your situation. Wow. Awesome. Awesome uh, presentation. We still have like a minute or two or three left. Uh, if anybody has anything else, other than that, uh, do, do you have the time to talk okay. about how to uh, shut off um, while we're doing editing? Okay. So if you are in Cloudflare, here's all your things. We talked about the speed uh, optimization. Here's where a lot of those tools were. You can see there are paid tools like image resizing and things. There's really incredible paid tools also. Um, here's where you do all the speed delivery, early hints, et cetera. The caching is here. You click the configuration tab and, and I know where you're struggling. Um, you might've had to keep coming in and purging. You can purge the cache to reveal a change you've made, but you don't wanna do that every two seconds if you're doing a lot of changes. So if you scroll down, Joe, mm -hmm. development, development mode. What's really smart about this is um, it's going to auto disable itself in four hours. So if I forget to, it won't stay on forever. So I love that because if I'm busy, sometimes I forget to come back and disable development mode. So once you've done that, it temporarily bypasses your entire cache. Nice. Yeah. So you do all your development. Then you come up and say, okay, I'm going to purge my entire cache once all my changes are made. I've seen them. They work great. Now my cache is empty. I turn off development mode. And now when you reload your site, it'll repopulate your cache and you are, should be good to go. Nice. So yeah, give that a try. If you're not using it, Joe, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's on every site we have, that's for sure. Fantastic. Wow. So that was a lot of great information. Looks like some people are going to revisit Cloudflare that tried it again. It's obviously uh, been progressing, like you said. Um, Great. Thanks, Victor. Uh, Feel free to reach out. And everybody, uh, and once again, thank you for sponsoring this event. As the main sponsor, it's been a great event so far. Still lots to go. And so I am going to end the session. For everybody, you get a chance to have a quick break, grab a drink, maybe a snack, and uh, get to the next session. Thanks again, Victor. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.